Hey, my name is Christoph. Today I would like to show you my latest extension, which could have saved hours of my developer life with ClickSense, because it is a very simple button that allows you to refresh a design of a published app when you're working in a copy of it. And as a second function, it also allows reload of that app without going through the load script, which means it also works in a published app. It uses the QRS API. So let's get started. So as usual, the journey starts in the hub and you're done with an application and you decide to publish the app, right? So let's put it into the everyone stream. So right after that, if you open that app from the everyone stream, you will notice you can no longer edit it. So here we have the app and you instantly see there's no edit button. Instead, there is a duplicate button, which means you're taking a copy of the sheet just for yourself and you can't change the base design. So now let's follow the official way. Uh, I take a copy of the app. The copy will appear under my work. So here it is. So let's change this ugly red color here to make it a, a nice blue one and say you want to publish this app. Usually you would go to the management console. Hopefully you have content admin access or above so that you can refresh the app. Uh, instead, what we are doing now is use my little extension. You'll find it after installation under extension and it's called replace reload button. It first says that there are invalid virtual proxy settings. Yes, it takes a virtual proxy to be set up. And uh, you better, the best thing is to follow my steps on GitHub because that would take too many minutes of this video. But there is a header authentication set up for one of these virtual proxies. And this gives access via the browser to the QRS API. So all I have to do now is to specify the name of the virtual proxy, the user key, and the way it is uh, providing that header value. And after that is set, you should see this invalid proxy settings disappear. So now you're good to go. And there are two buttons, as I mentioned, the reload button and the replace design button. So the reload button, very straightforward, just reloads the app. So it triggers a reload in the back and when it's done, it refreshes the app. So it's not going through the UI, it's going through a task at the server. And this will also work if the app is published. But if I don't want this on the published app to be visible, because you, for example, don't want people to make instant reloads, you can say hide within published apps. You can also go and set a conditional show which calculates a condition. Uh, for example, checks if the current user is in a provided list here and only those users would be allowed to use the reload button, but I don't wanna use this right now. So now let's refresh the design of the published version. As you can see, this is still the old design. And if I use the button now to refresh the, the design, I need to just put the target app ID of the app here, which is this one. Let's say I want to refresh this app and click the button. There is a question mark coming back. You really want to replace the design. It's in stream, everyone. Just hit on OK and you're good to go. The design here, as you can see, is changing. There is one more thing. Let's now assume that you, you, when you work on the app, you have a different data behind. So you're working on a, let's say, on a test data set, whereas the app uh, in the published stream has different data. So to illustrate this, I reload the app once more and uh, we'll set this little text field here to copy. So now I have a different random value here and this reads copy. And now let's assume that the published app should reflect 
changes to the design, but not to the data. So I go back to this one and check mark this little button here, keep data and script of the target app. And all I need to do now is to provide a data connection to the clips app folder. So as a prerequisite, what I have done is I've created a data connection that points to the click app folder. This is where the, the physical apps are stored. In my case, it happens to be the click share apps and you'll see these binary chunks here. So these IDs reflect the data of the app. And with that in place, I can now go ahead, click replace app and it takes a couple of more steps. So you'll notice a little uh, progress bar here going from left to right. For a short moment, you will see the app, the target app data, but then it reverts it back to the original one. And now it says done. So here I'm in the copy, notice this one and notice the value is 0.04. And this one has 0.87 and it's the public version. So these two versions of the data plus the script are kept separately. This has another load script than the one before. And now let's play also with this one, say, um, I want the reload button also to appear in the published app. Press this again. It does the same steps again, refreshes the target app. And now I have a reload button even in the published version, which also works. But it executes the different um, load script, which keeps that text here and which just has, has a different random than the one uh, my working copy. So I think this is super useful. And again, this would have saved hours of my life because the alternative is to go back to the QMC, make a publish and replace, and then also reload the app instantaneously with other data. So if you think this is super cool, what about buying me a beer? Well, with that, I hope you liked it. See you the next time and take care. Yeah.